But in 1 Peter chapter 5, okay, we were in 1 Peter 1, now we're going to chapter 5. Verse 6 says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, amen, that he may exalt you in due time, okay? Now, notice what the next verse, now notice how you are humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, casting all your care upon him. When you cast all your care upon him, you are humbling yourself under his mighty hand. Why? Because you're giving it to him saying, you know what? I'm yours and here's my problem. So guess what? They're your problems now. And you just pass them right on and you pass those cares on. And then at, and now how do you ca- cast them on? You say, here's this, here's that. And you give it to him and you start to praise him for fixing all that stuff and taking care of it. And just praising him for being there that you can hand it off to him. Right? And you can tell when you've done it because that weight will lift off of you. If you still have the weight of that thing, you have not cast it upon him yet. Okay, I was years ago when I first started ministering to the sick and seeing results, and 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 it's a true statement. But and I, I remember at one point looking at my hands and I'm thinking, who I put these hands on will live, and if I don't put my hands on people, they may well die. Well, that's pretty heavy, right? And I was young and. I, you know, I, I believe the word of God, and I started going out and doing it on purpose and laying hands on the sick, and, but it just kept you know, getting heavy, and I kept thinking, I can't get to this one, can't get to that. It was almost like a you know, Schindler's List moment at the end when they're all trying to leave, and he's like, oh, man, I could have, for this pen, I could have got three more. Oh, for this watch, I could have. It was like that. It got to that point where it just started to crush me to the point where when I would start to walk into Walmart, because that's where I usually went to find people to pray for, and when I would walk in, as soon as I walked through the doors, I'd literally start crying. Wow. I mean, just start crying. And, and I'm, I'm trying to tell God, I, you know, I don't need this. I'm walking into Walmart, right? Don't want to walk around crying. And so, but it kept getting heavy on me. And so finally, one day I walked in. And you know, they have those fans right there with the door, especially in the summer to keep flies out and that stuff. And it blows the air back up. And it, it was like I walked through tear gas. Wow. I mean, I'm just, I just break. And so I didn't even go on into Walmart. I turned right and went, went straight into the restroom, went straight to the very back stall, shut that door. And I mean, I'm weeping. Wow. And I lean up against that wall and I'm crying and I'm like, God, what's going on? I don't get it. I don't understand. I, you know, I just want to help people. And, and I just literally start sliding down the wall until I'm sitting on the floor and just weeping. And I could hear people coming and going. I don't know what they thought. But I'm weeping and crying and just going to say, and so finally I'm like, God, you got to stop. You got to, no, this has to stop. I said, if you don't stop this, I said, somebody's going to come in here and I'm going to be gone. I mean, just mentally, because I just, it was a, a, you know, just a natural defense thing. And so then I get out and pull myself together, go out, and I end up talking to a person that was working with us. And uh, she was actually a state director for us. And I was explaining some of these things to her. And she said, oh, Curry, she said, listen. You, you, you've got to turn that over to God. You've got to cast that onto Jesus. He's, she said, uh, you know, you're, you're starting to develop this kind of a, almost like a Messiah complex where you've got to do it. And she said, you've got to cast that in him. She said, if you don't, there's a reason he told us to cast our cares upon him because they will crush you. And she said, then you'll be no good for anybody. And I'm like, you're right. And she brought that to my attention. And so I started learning how to cast the cares. And so I learned when I laid hands on people. I believed. I went after it. I was, in many cases, very aggressive in it. And then, but when I walked off, when, as I walked off, I'm like, that's your deal. I did my part. You said lay hands on the sick. You said believe. That's what I did. Their recovering is up to you. That's you. Go on, because I can't claim that. If I do that, now I'm, now I'm God. You know what I'm saying? If I'm claiming that, then that's all on me. No, no, no. We have to understand that we have to pass that to him because I can't take credit for their healing. No. See, if, if that's on me, then I can take credit for their healing and I couldn't do that because he's the healer. Hey. Does that make sense? So I had to learn how to do it. So then as I walked away, I, I would just say, that I, I did it. I did my part. I'm done. I'm done. My hands are clean. Now it's up to you. Fix, change, heal, whatever you got to do. And I learned how to cast that care onto them. And then there's times when the Holy Spirit would bring them back up. He'd bring them back to my face and go, hit that again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that was over there in Walmart at this place and this and it, or it was at this place. And now it's in healing lines and I'll see people's faces. I'll hit it again. And, but, but it's not a, a care. Why? Because the cares are also distractions. Why? Because if you're thinking about the cares, you're not thinking about the word or thinking about Jesus. 
or even you know, loving God or loving people. So that, that the cares that you are to cast upon him are also part of those cares of Mark chapter 4 that says it's the cares of the world that actually choke out the word. 